Welcome back. Today we're going to dive into VDebug. In one of my last videos, I posted a uh, how-to on setting up VDebug, setting up php.ini to interact with VDebug and actually start the debug session. Um, but I didn't really walk through all of the features of VDebug, and I feel like that would be kind of valuable uh, information to have. So today we're going to walk through a script that I wrote. It happens to be my birthday month. So I have a birthday script that's going to tell me happy birthday. And let me just show you what happens here. If I run birthday.php, it says happy birthday and it says the end. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. So we're going to break this script and then we're going to we're going to debug it and see how we can uh, step through, step in and out of functions and how that all works with VDebug. So let's go into the script first of all and let's look to see what's going on in here. So we have this class called birthday announcer. It's a very simple class. It has a constructor that accepts a name. It sets the name to this property. And uh, there's an announce function where what, if we call the announce function, it will use the name and echo out happy birthday name exclamation point. Uh, here we offer uh, an input for this particular script. So it'll take the first argument and if no argument is set, it will just fall back to my name. And finally, we create a new birthday announcer, pass in whatever name we, we decided on. And then when we select or when we call the announce function, it will echo that out. And finally, we'll echo the end. So how are we going to break this? Well, let's uh, let's change this to argv0. And this will actually this will actually output bday.php because that's the the zero argument that gets passed into a PHP script. So let's check to see what's going on here. Okay, great. So we broke the script. Um, let's say you're at this point and you don't really know what you did. Um, obviously, you can DD throughout your scripts and figure out exactly what's going on or die and uh, die and exit whatever you decide to use. But in this case, we're obviously trying to test out vdebug. Uh, let's do that. Um, so first of all, um, let me check my php.ini configuration. If I, pass, if I type php-ini, it gives us all the configuration files that are loaded. So I'm going to edit this one. And OK, good. So I have my xdebug extension enabled, remote enabled, auto start, and I'm using port 9001 which if you saw in my last video, I had to use port 9001 because this is on a virtual machine and there was some conflicts somehow with my port 9000 on my local machine. So um, let's go into the script. Okay, we had already broken it. Let's, um, let's create a breakpoint here. So uh, creating a breakpoint in VDebug is F10. So when I hit F10, it gives me this little icon on the left hand side and this is going to be the point at which the script actually stops running and VDebug takes over and lets you start doing some step debugging. Uh, and just for display purposes, just so we can see in, in this example, I'm also going to create a, um, a breakpoint on line 9. And I want to do this so that we can see how this actually, how the breakpoints actually um, come into effect at what point in the in the running of the script it comes into effect and let's go ahead and start the vdebug session that's with f5 so now on the bottom it says vdebug will wait for a connection so now if we run this script vdebug will stop at the first breakpoint now you'll notice that it didn't stop at the breakpoint on line nine. It stopped at the breakpoint at line 18 because that's where the script is actually running. It created the class. And then when it actually goes to run the script is input and read the input, that's where VDebug stops and says, okay, I'm going to start the, start the, the debug process. So let me quickly walk through the windows that we get available by default with VDebug. On the left hand side is the script that we're actually debugging. And on the right hand side, we have three separate windows. You actually can't see one of them right now because there's uh, there's nothing in the in this in the stack. 
So I'm going to make it bigger just so that we can see that there's a window here. Okay, so we got three windows here. Um, we have the, the status of, of everything that's going on up here. Then we have the stack, and you can see down here the naming of, of these windows. Now we have the stack, which right now the stack is just this one file. In larger frameworks and stuff, you'll have a, a bunch of files and, and classes that you'll see in the stack itself. And then down here, we have the debugger watch, which is essentially all of the variables that we have going on in the script uh, right now. There are local, there are super globals, which if you hover over any of these words and hit enter, um, it will select that, that and then user defined constants, which right now there are none. So right now we're looking at locals. We can see that the argv value has a birthday, bday.php as arg value zero. And we didn't actually pass in any arguments to the script, so we don't have an argv one which would normally be the name that we pass through to a birthday announcer. And you can move around these windows just as you would any uh, Vim splits, which is uh, control W and then uh, HJKL to go through the, the different screens you have. Um, of course, if you modified your VimRC, it's, it'll be different, but moving around these windows is not any different than moving around in your Vim splits. So let's do the first uh, VDebug command, and that's gonna be the step over. So step over runs only to the next executable line of code. Um, so if you see right now on the right-hand side and under the, the debug watcher, um, input name is uninitialized. And that's because we haven't actually run line 18, which is the breakpoint that we stopped at. In order for us to run it, we need to step over it. So that's going to be F2. So I'm going to go back to the screen and F2. So now we've run line 18. And on the right hand side, we can see what input name has been changed to bday.php. Uh, we're at, now at line 20. Uh, it automatically stopped at line 20, which is the next executable line of code. But we have not run this line. In order to run this line, again, you have to step over. Uh, so let me show you what it looks like when I step over this line. F2. And now we've set a breakpoint on line 9, which is inside of the birthday announcer class. And since we newed up the birthday announcer class, this line actually got executed. So VDebug knows that there's a breakpoint in here and decides to stop the functionality, stop the running of the script, and allow you to take over from here. And as you can see on the right hand side now, locals is within this is now birthday announcer. So the the um, the scope is now modified. We don't have the arg v values anymore because that's outside of the scope of the birthday announcer class. We are now within birthday announcer. So we could see that name that got passed through in the constructor is bday.php, but this name is not set yet because we have not stepped over. So again, function two, we stepped over. Now this name is set and we can continue on with the script with running the script. Um, so if I hit F2 again, we drop back down to line 22, which logically makes sense. We've newed up the birthday announcer. We've set the name, but we haven't actually called the announce method yet. On this line, if we were to step over, it would call the announce function, echo out to standard out, just as it normally would, and we'd stop at line 24. Since we don't have a breakpoint at line 14, which is the announce method itself, it will just go ahead and step over and we'll end up on line 24. Let me show you that that's the case. F2. Great, we've echoed out, happy birthday. Um, and we've stopped at line 24. This is, this is where step into comes into play. If I wanted to actually go into the announce method and, and start step debugging within the announce method, I could do step into. We didn't, we stepped over. 
So it ran whatever functionality in that method was going to be called and just moved you on to the next executable line of code, which in this case is echoing out the end. So there is no way right now using xdebug to move backwards. You can't go back and say, hey, I want to go into an ounce and see what happened. You have to rerun the script again in order to see that information. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you step over a method call and we don't step into it. And of course, if I hit F2 again, now the session, the debug session has completed and depending on whether you have VDebug listening for new connections automatically right away or not, um, that will continue. So in this case, I believe VDebug is still listening for it, uh, for the uh, session to initialize again. So I reran the birthday script and VDebug was still listening for connections. So now once again, we are able to step debug this script. Now let me show you what step into looks like. So I'm going to hit F2. F2, we've stepped over. We step over again, stop at the breakpoint at line nine. And when I hit F2 a couple more times, now we're back at line 22, speaker announce. Now, if you remember last time when I hit F2, we stepped over and it, we didn't stop within the announce method. But this time I want to, I want to see what is going on in this announce method. Um, for example, if, if this birthday announcer class was in a separate file altogether, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't see that it was just an echoing out of a string. I'd want to see what is actually going on in this function. So I step into, which is F3. So F3 steps into the function and stops at the first line of executable code. Now we can continue on the same process. F2 step debugging our, our script. If you have done a step into and you're inside of a method call and you want to get out, that's where F4 comes into play. F4 is a step out function. Uh, so we, we kind of uh, jump out of the method and go back to the first call, the first line of script right after that method would have been called initially. So let's see, let's show you what happens if I hit F4 from inside of this function. And now we go back to line 24. This, the next line that we would have been called, that would have been called if from line 22, we just ran step over instead of step into. So that's a quick breakdown of what step over, step into, and step out actually do. So another cool feature about VDebug is the run to cursor command. F9 is run to cursor. So if you set your cursor anywhere below where the current script is stopped at, when you hit F9, it will run the script up until that cursor point. Now let me show you what that looks like. So first of all, I'm going to clear this breakpoint here using F10. F10 is to toggle breakpoints on and off. I'm going to leave this breakpoint here on line 18. And I'm going to show you that I can go to line 22, hit F9, and have VDebug stop at that break at that uh, temporary breakpoint, I guess you could call it. Um, so I'm going to have VDebug listen for a connection. I'm going to run the script again. Okay, so the script is ready to go again. We're at line 18. The script has stopped. We're ready to start debugging again. I want to jump straight to line 22. I don't want to deal with whatever's in between these two lines. And I don't want to have to set a breakpoint and rerun the script just so that I have a breakpoint here. So if I set my cursor here and hit F9, the script runs all the way until that point. The next feature I'd like to showcase is VDebug eval. And what VDebug eval allows you to do is evaluate any arbitrary code against your script at the point in time that your script is stopped. So if I wanted to see what the speaker value is at this point in time, I can type in VDebug eval speaker. So this will give us the value of speaker at the point in time that the script is stopped. I can do a similar thing using leader E. So if I visually select a piece of code, 
Right now I only have the variable speaker selected. If I hit leader E, it will do the exact same thing. Now you didn't see any change under debugger watch because we had previously uh, asked to view what speaker is using vdebug eval. But for example, let's see what, uh, what input name is. We're gonna visually highlight this, input name, leader E, and we can see on the right hand side that input name is bday.php. So vdebug eval and leader E are great ways to dig into your code, into your variables um, in your script at the point in time that the script is stopped uh, to kind of give you a better understanding of where the script itself is going wrong. Now in this case, we obviously have broken our own script, so we know that it's the argument variable that we need to modify. So let's go ahead and fix this script and get it back working. So I'm gonna hit F6 two times to stop this script altogether from running, get us out of this debugger and back into just Vim itself. F6, F6, and here we are back in Vim. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this breakpoint out. Change this back to one. So now what happens if we run our birthday script by itself, we get the fallback to my name. And if we run the birthday script with another name, we get happy birthday, this other name, and we know that our script is working. Another cool thing about vdebug is the help file. If you do help vdebug, it comes with this incredibly well organized help file that you can step through, read all of this information. It's a great, great read if you want to really get into some complex setups or some complex commands. Um, all of the questions that you have, or most of the questions that you have at least, will be answered in this help file itself. So we were able to use vdebug to step through my birthday script and see where I broke things. Stepping through my script and watching variables change as we step through and even being able to call arbitrary commands against my script uh, at any point in time made it very clear where my issue was. Now, I don't think vdebug or xdebug need to be used for every single debugging situation. There are absolutely times to use tools like dd and vardump, but there have been many, many times where I have come across complex issues that had I not been using vdebug, I would have just spent hours thrashing, trying to figure out where I made a mistake, where just using a tool like vdebug pointed it out to me and made it very clear where my issue was. So I hope you enjoyed my little intro to step debugging and my showcase of some of the vdebug tools. Uh, to use xdebug within Vim. I find it incredibly helpful. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, please hit me up on Twitter at Jose Can Help, and I will see you next time.